Before anyone freaks out about the title of this video, I am fine. Every single test that was run on me came back normal. Everything's cool. I am okay. I'm taking a couple of days off, but I am otherwise fine. Also, I am not fundraising. I live in a civilized country. We have universal health care. All of the nonsense that you're about to hear about cost me exactly $2, and that was for the bus ticket home. So anyway, story time, I guess. This is not the usual content for my channel, but I feel like I kind of need to vent about this just to get it out of my system. So yesterday, for reasons that I don't fully understand, possibly I made a bad movement of my body or something, I had a massive shooting pain run up through my entire chest and my back that then eventually resolved itself into a kind of clinging, heavy tension in my chest that just persisted and persisted for, well, pretty much the entire night, robbing me completely of sleep. I had a couple of panic attacks in that time because I deal with generalized anxiety, and I figured that probably a lot of my symptoms were at least in some part due to anxiety about that initial pain response. Anyway, six hours pass, I'm still feeling tension in my chest, and at that point I decide, okay, I should probably call a doctor about this. So I call the attending doctor at my local ER, it's a 24-hour hotline, you can call it any time. He listens to me, listens to my symptoms, and says, okay, well, that might be an anxiety attack, but just in case, we're gonna send an ambulance to come get you. And while I fully understand that's more of a better safe than sorry kind of thing, which I certainly appreciate, that, you know, doesn't help my anxiety that a doctor all of a sudden thinks that it's worth bringing in in an ambulance to get examined, so that's fun. So at around 9 o'clock this morning, an ambulance arrives, I go down there, I get put into the ambulance, and they start putting things on my body, electrodes, all kinds of blood testing equipment, they put a little tap into my hand that allows them to just take blood samples anytime that they want, which also turns out to, like, hurt a lot. And something else that also hurts is the rubber band that they wrap around your arm in order to get your veins to show up so that they can put the damn thing in a rubber band that stays on me for longer than I think it probably had to. Anyway, the EMT is calm and professional and trying to extract useful information from me about what kinds of medicines I take, do I have any health issues, is there any heart disease in the family, etc, etc, while they're doing blood symbols, while they're taking my blood pressure, while they're doing an echocardiogram, while the ambulance is going to the goddamn hospital. Needless to say, I am trying very hard not to freak the fuck out all of the time, trying to calm myself down by the knowledge that, well, I mean, if anything goes wrong, there's literally an EMT right there. I am already in the ambulance. I'm probably as safe as I can be, but God damn it, my anxiety is not about to be rational about any fucking thing. By the time I get to the hospital, they've taken an EKG and they've managed to get preliminary results back on a blood sample that says that I don't have any of the enzymes or anything in my blood that says that there's a heart issue, and the EKG shows that my heart is completely normal. This helps calm me down a little bit. When I get to the hospital, though, the EMT is calling them and trying to figure out where they're supposed to put me, and the cardiology department says that given my symptoms, there's probably no reason to put me there, so they transfer them back to the general emergency room, which say, hey, isn't he supposed to go to the cardiology department? And then the EMT says, no, the cardiology department says he's supposed to go to you, and they say, well, okay, then let's just call and make some arrangements, blah, blah, blah. It takes about 10 minutes, and while the knowledge of the echocardiogram and the blood sample is helping me stay calm in this situation, the prospects of being thrown around by bureaucracy are not especially entertaining to me. Fortunately, like I said, only takes 10 minutes. I go to the emergency room. A very nice nurse shows up to take care of me, takes off all of the EKG material that the EMT had put on me, and then puts on the hospital's own EKG material because it turns out they need to take another EKG just to double, extra, triple, double, extra check. And they also need to take more blood samples, which... By the way, have I mentioned that I'm really not fond of needles? Something else I'm not fond of? The coronavirus, which fortunately is not really spreading very rapidly at all in the country where I live and seems to be mostly eliminated in the region where I live. Like, at the point when I was at the hospital, they literally had one corona patient there, so I wasn't too worried. The nurses and doctors were, like, constantly disinfecting their hands as they walk in and out of the room, which I suppose they're supposed to do anyway. But still, the thought that keeps circling around in my head is that if I get coronavirus in the motherfucking hospital. I am killing God when I get to the pearly gates. Which is the kind of thought that you distract yourself with when you're anxious as hell and trying to retain some semblance of control over the situation by imagining that at the very least, if everything goes wrong, you can get revenge. 
Fast forward to two doctors, an echocardiogram, a blood sample, and a urine sample later, and the doctors pretty much tell me, okay, we think what happened is you had some serious back pain, it radiated into your chest, you had an anxiety freakout, and because anxiety freakouts very much resemble cardiac arrest symptoms, we took you to the hospital to check on you, everything seems fine, your heart seems fine, maybe get your cholesterol under a little bit more control, but you can go home now. So that's nice. The nurses stop by again, they get rid of the echocardiogram things and the monitoring stuff that they put on me, I put my clothes on, I put my shoes on, and finally it's time to remove the little blood drain tap thing that's been stuck in my hand this whole time, and which is hurting, by the way, like a bitch. The very friendly nurse extracts it from under my skin, thank god, puts a little cotton wad on it and a little bit of tape and says, hey, you should keep some pressure on that for just a minute. So I do that, then I grab my shirt and my shoes and my phone, which is literally all I had on me, and I walk out of the hospital fully intending to take the bus and go home. Story over, right? Well, no, because it turns out when the nurse said that I should keep pressure on my hand for a minute, she meant like for more, like she meant like more than a minute until it stops bleeding. I had not quite registered this, so I just put on my big ass hoodie shirt with the sleeve that goes all the way down over my hand, walked out the door, I get to the bus stop, and all of a sudden I'm thinking, hey, why does my left hand feel really wet for some reason? Then I look at my hand and I see that my sleeve, which fortunately is black so it's not going to leave much of a stain, is soaked through with my own blood. And not only is my sleeve soaked through, I have left a trail of blood stains after me as I walked out of the hospital and over to the bus stop. I've literally left a trail of blood like you'd see in a video game or some movie about a crazy billionaire who's trying to hunt the greatest game of all, which is man, on his deserted island. I'm wounded and I'm dripping blood like an animal. Fortunately, I am a man of steely self-control and absolute stoicism, so I immediately freak the fuck out. I grasp my bleeding hand with all the strength I can muster, and I run back to the emergency room, dripping blood everywhere I go. I've still got the blood stains on my shoes to prove it. Rock up to the reception desk, trying to play it cool, like, yes, hello, hi. I left a second ago with the thing, and they took it out, and I pressure on, but now it's bleeding, please help me. And the reception lady has clearly seen this kind of thing before, so she's like, oh, well, hmm, that's certainly a problem. Just keep the pressure on. I'll call a nurse for you. So the same nurse that initially sent me on my way comes back and goes, I did tell you to keep pressure on it, right? And I say, yeah, you did tell me to keep pressure on it. Yeah, I just, I just kind of, maybe I didn't keep enough pressure on it. And she's very nice. She's trying to reassure me. She's saying, hey, don't be stressed out about this. You're not losing that much blood. It's fine. Just keep the pressure on. She helps me wash my hands, gets a fresh cotton swab, puts it on there and says, now this time, keep the pressure on it. And so I, with my bloodstained shirt, once again, leave the hospital, this time not bleeding all over the ground, which is nice, go to the bus stop, and I spent the next 10 minutes until the buzz arrives just basically mumbling out loud like a crazy maniac. I'm grasping my hand, pacing back and forth, and just talking out loud like, oh boy, this sure has been a fun day of quarantine, ha ha ha. Like I'm monologuing my inner dialogue to myself out loud, basically as a means of controlling my rampaging anxiety. <laughs> It's basically my lack of sleep and the long period of time I've spent being in like a constant state of minor anxiety attack that's catching up to me at this point. And even though I am objectively completely fine, every test has come back completely normal and I am no longer bleeding all over everything, I'm still freaking out a little bit. Anyway, the bus gets there, I get my bus ticket, which is the only expense I incurred over the course of this whole thing, by the way, civilized country, remember? Get on the bus and drive away home, and I am halfway there when I hear the shitty little kid who's sitting right behind me go, <coughs> and he's not coughing into his elbow, and his mom isn't even reprimanding him for it, so I'm like, Okay, I'm just gonna go to the other end of the bus for a second, so I go up to the front of the bus instead, nearer to the bus driver, and not two minutes later, I hear the bus driver go... <coughs> <coughs> Now, under normal circumstances, I would have rationally reassured myself and said, hey, there's barely any coronavirus where I live. It's probably fine. I don't need to freak the fuck out about it. So long as I'm not breathing in any particles directly, I'm probably going to be OK. But I'm not in a frame of mind to be rational. So I immediately hit the goddamn stop button, get out of the bus and I walk the rest of the way home, desperately grasping my non-bleeding hand, mumbling to myself like a lunatic, and so strung out on both anxiety and the painkillers that the doctors gave me to help with my back that I don't really know what the fuck my state of mind was by the time I arrived home. Anyway, I've since had some sleep, 
I am fine, my back hurts a bit, and the doctor at the hospital says to talk to my own doctor about maybe getting a referral to a physical therapist in case that becomes needed. The day is pretty much over. I'm gonna eat some pizza. I'm gonna take a couple of days off. And then I'll get back to work on editing some boss designs of Dark Souls, or maybe working on What's the Deal with Fiddlesticks or Volibear. As for all of you, thank you for listening to this. I hope it didn't stress you out too much. I am under the circumstances, okay, physically, there's nothing wrong with my health. I'm gonna go to bed for a while, I'm gonna eat some food, I'm gonna watch some YouTube, I'm gonna shitpost on Twitter, and I'll be back with, like, real videos when I've had like a day or two of rest.